Islamophobia out of political correctness, it has had no problem glorifying far-left terrorism. For more on this, Farifa Hafez joins me now from Vienna. He's a lecturer and researcher at the University of Salzburg and was among the speakers of the launch of SET report. Professor Hafez, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us. So this report makes it possible um, to follow the development of anti-Muslim racism in Europe. Is there a significant difference in this report from previous ones? Well, um, yes, absolutely. I mean, this is what we aimed for, right? When we started this whole project back in 2015, this is now the fifth consecutive uh, report that we have published. And uh, what we try to do is to provide data, basically, for scholars, for civil society activists, for politicians who are interested in anti-racist policies. And um, I think what we have seen in 2019 now in this report uh, in contrast to other reports, is really the, the rise of the danger of uh, stemming from uh, white supremacist uh, weaponized groups who are trying to terrorize not only Muslim minorities, but mainstream politicians, as we have seen, for instance, uh, in the murder of uh, Christian democratic politician Walter Lübcke in Germany, or the terrorist attack in Hanau, which targeted uh, uh, Muslims and uh, also the, the target uh, that, uh, Jewish people, right? Are there countries doing better or worse in combating Islamophobia? Well, I think uh, definitely there are countries where you see um, there is an interest at least in recognizing there, that there is something like anti-Muslim hate crime. Uh, the Republic of Germany has implemented uh, this uh, category of uh, anti-Muslimness in the hate crime data in 2017, for instance. Uh, Ireland has uh, such uh, uh, a data that are, there are still most European countries do not differentiate between different hate crimes. Hence, they cannot see and make visible also uh, which uh, groups, minorities uh, are targeted more than others. Um, also, at the very same time, we see there are countries where anti-Muslim uh, um, 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 activities are monitored more or less. And there are also countries that do fund uh, 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 kind of activities that are combating this anti-Muslim racism more than others. Um, so yes, absolutely. And I would say, like generally speaking, there is also what we can see in more of the eastern countries of Europe, that there is even a stronger denial of the very existence of Islamophobia. When you see that, let's say, uh, countries like Hungary with uh, Viktor Orban, for instance, um, who draw heavily on anti-Muslim mobilization and they are in the center of power. Professor, what are some of the policy recommendations CETA hopes the European Parliament would adopt? Well, in terms of the European Parliament, what we would absolutely wish, and we're not alone with this, but we are rather supporting a long-standing uh, recommendation that is coming from the civil society and has been also supported by a lot of scholars like uh, the ones who have been part uh, of this uh, report, is to have a resolution against or for the fight against Islamophobia. We do have two kinds of similar resolutions, one against anti-Semitism, the other against anti-Gypsyism. And what we see is that there is still a large denial in the public sphere when it comes to Islamophobia or anti-Muslim racism. So what we really need is a clear signal from the side of the European Parliament, uh, with which we hope that also uh, EU member states uh, would jump on such an initiative to implement uh, more legislation and also to implement more projects to fight uh, anti-Muslim racism. Right, Farid Hafez, we appreciate you speaking with us. Um, thank you for your work.